Last winter I was having a lot of trouble with the four-wheel drive shifter on this truck. Uh, it was acting flaky and sometimes refused to shift or I'd start up the truck and would put itself into four-wheel drive and then complain. Uh, I tried replacing the shifter motor, I tried replacing the controller to no avail. I finally managed to track the fault to the wiring harness though not to a specific spot so I ran a new wire alongside the harness just to get things working again. Now that the weather's nicer, I'm going to have a look and see if I can find the problem with the harness. When I was cleaning everything up, putting in the temporary wire, I think I found where the harness was damaged, but it was winter, it was dark, I couldn't really see the harness very well, so now's the time to have a closer look. I've got the truck raised up on a bit of lumber now, so I have a little more room to work underneath. Even when I was moving the truck, I found once again it didn't want to shift into four-wheel drive, which would have made getting on the blocks a little easier. Here's the shifter motor. I'm sort of looking at this uh, from the driver's side. Back up a bit. Over here is the skid plate for the transfer case. And this is the motor itself, and I'm going to undo the connector here. First, I've got to pull out the little retainer clip. Might need a tool for that though. Well, there it is. That little retainer clip keeps the connector from coming apart. And once that's out, I can just push the little release latch and I should be able to get the connector to come off. There's the connector. Now it's got a little push fit, like a Christmas tree type thing, into the, uh, into the body of the transfer case there. I'm just going to try and yank that out again. I had it out before, and I'll have it out again. Oh, the tool might be useful. Oh, it's coming. There we go. Now I can pass this over to the other side of the transfer case. Which we're going to now. Jeez, I only ran the engine for a minute. And the exhaust is already hot. So I'm going to have to be careful here. I don't burn my nose. Or my face. Or the phone. Okay, you can sort of see the harness there. Silhouetted against the background. I think I'm going to have to wait for the exhaust to cool off before I do anything else. But I think the damage is pretty much right there where that little red cable tie is. Where it's touching the under uh, the insulation under the body. Right where my fingers are, I can feel, well there's bare wire there because there's another side connection. That goes somewhere, okay, can I undo that? Oh wait, that's just a clip to hold things in place, so I can unclip that. Okay, pull that out. There we go, there's the damage. That is, that is actually not rodent damage, that is rubbing. That is just caused by rubbing against something. Because if it were rodent damage, there would be more, uh, more tooth marks visible. So it looks like I got three wires to worry about. That need to be repaired. So I have to strip back this plastic uh, guard. I wonder if I can undo another another tie here and get a little more harness visible. 
Uh, sorry for the shaky picture. Oh, no, I don't think I can get much more harness down here because there's another big connector up there. There's a cable that goes across and attaches to the, uh, I guess, to the transmission itself. And then going this way, where my thumb is pointing, the cable goes forward and then up over the top of the transmission and ends up in the right side of the engine compartment near the firewall. And undoing this connector won't help much because it's got plenty of slack there anyway. It's the connector going over the top of the transmission that's limiting how much free cable I have at this point. I might have a look at the other side and see what it plugs into. Maybe I can unplug it. Because I would have, like to have a little better reach than I do here. Because this is still... This is, uh, this is at the, fore of the front drive shaft. And this here is a still kind of warm exhaust pipe. And this here is the skid plate. As you can see, I sort of have to work around these to get at this cable to fix it. So I'll have to see if I can get a little more slack in the cable. So I've got enough wire exposed here that I'll be able to cut the wires and fit on some heat shrink tubing and repair them. This wire is completely broke. This wire here is completely broken. I'm pretty sure this wire is completely broken, which explains why it wouldn't shift today. And this wire here is chafed through the insulation. So I may cut it. I may cut that and replace it so I can get some tubing on there too. I still have to figure out how to protect the whole cable from chafing though. Well, I've got one splice wire uh, soldered in place and the other one is soldered and the heat shrink's ready to shrink. I'm not going to bother fixing that third wire because the conductors all look intact. All I'm going to do is fix up the insulation on it. I got my splices soldered and the heat shrink tubing is in place but not shrunk yet. I figured I better hook it up and make sure it works. And it does! So I'm going to disconnect this again so I can finish the repair work. He says. Well, see you later. And this little doodad here attaches to the wiring harness and that sort of Oh, corrugated looking little button slides through a hole in the case of the transfer case. And as you can see, it's in two pieces now. So what I'm going to have to do is drill a hole through here and then use a zip tie through the hole in the transfer case to set it up. But I also have to make sure that it's oriented the right way on the wiring harness so that it holds the harness up above the transfer case instead of sideways or some other obnoxious orientation that won't work. I've got a double layer of wire loom on that, so in case it does start rubbing, it'll take a while to break through, hopefully. Okay, now I've got some tape around the, uh, some tape around the wire loom, just to hold it on. A zip tie at that end, and two zip ties at this end, over the, uh, the legs of that retainer. So I think I'm ready to put the cable back in its place now. And here we are, pretty much at back at the opening shot. Here's the connector on the motor, and the harness goes here. There's a little Christmas tree fastener here. And it's not rubbing there, and it's not rubbing up here. And it's not rubbing in there. up there you can see it's also quite clear of everything so hopefully there, see it's not touching the body not touching anything so hopefully this will be the end of it and everything will work from now on ha 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 okay so here's how it works you switch to four-wheel drive lock 
and the light blinks for a moment, and there we are in four-wheel drive lock. I go to four-wheel drive low, that tells me to shift into neutral, so I do. And there it is in four-wheel drive low. I switch back to four regular four-wheel drive, and there we are. I switch off. And it's done. Hooray!